Good afternoon. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. It is the 25th of June out here in New England in Growing Zone 6B. And I'm gonna do some gathering today. We've got some chamomile coming in. I'm sure you can see that back behind me. And we've got some other odds and ends. There's some herbs coming in that I wanna bring inside. I'd like to bring in some basil so that I can set that up for pesto and freeze it. Um, and I've got some dill heads that I wanna bring in and freeze as well. We've also got some raspberry shenanigans going on. The guys have just headed out to the farm store to go pick up some cattle panels and tea posts because we're gonna put in some trellises. Uh, the raspberries are looking really great over there, but they definitely could use some support. So we're gonna get involved in that today too. Come take a peek at this chamomile. It's looking so nice. These guys are what we're gonna be harvesting today. Just got a handful of these pretties to take care of today. But look, there's so many more. There are all these buds coming in all over the place. So down here too. And in order for us to get even more flowers, we have to pick the ones that we've got. So that's what we're gonna do today. Real easy. This is when you wanna pick them, when the petals are still out. And we're just gonna pull the flower head right off of there. So I just got a scant handful off of it, just a little bit. We wanna get the blossom production up. So that means we need to pick the blossoms to have it make other blossoms. And so we just got a little bit here, just a little bit. I have a spot set up for it inside a little screen with a piece of cheesecloth over it where everything's gonna dry. It is out of direct sunlight, but it's still in a warm spot. And uh, over the course of the season, we will just keep picking chamomile and bringing it in and it will dry. And by the end of the season, we should have at least a pot's worth of tea. <laughs> Another thing I wanna do today is bring down these dill tops. You can see them behind me. Um, our dill bolted just like everybody's dill bolted with the heat. So I'm gonna bring those in. I'm told that I can freeze these tops. Um, so I'm gonna give that a shot and maybe we'll have them ready when we do pickles. In the meanwhile, I'm going to continue to plant more dill <laughs> and uh, see if we can have some ready fresh by the time we do pickles as well. Oh, look at all this dill. Look at all these beautiful dill heads. I grabbed a nice big handful of dill heads out of there. Hope you can see these. Like I said, I'm told I can freeze these. I'm gonna lay them out kind of individually on a baking sheet and then freeze them. Once they've been frozen for a little while, I, I think I'm gonna leave them for like half a day or something or maybe even overnight. And once they're, they're frozen and they've got some integrity to them, I'll put them in a Ziploc bag. Um, we want to freeze them first so that they don't all stick together in a big clump. Mmm, that smells so good. Uh, so <laughs> once they're nice and frozen and we're sure they're frozen, I will put them in a Ziploc bag and move them down to the basement where they'll be available when we're ready for them. But until then, I'm going to just pop them in some water, let them keep nice and fresh. So I put a bunch of my herbs in pots this year. I did not do that last year. And one of the things that I have in pots and in the ground right now is chamomile. And something I noticed is that my chamomile that's in the big green pot is doing, it's doing so much better than the stuff that I've got right in the herb patch over there. So 
I'm thinking I'm going to start moving some stuff around over the course of this summer and maybe change up what I'm doing. There are definitely some herbs in there that are doing fantastic. The sage and the oregano and the thyme look freaking great. The chamomile is just doing better in the pot. So I think I may be dedicating that big green planter to the chamomile and letting it recede in there. Uh, something else that is doing better in pots than it's doing in the patch is basil. Look at this stuff. Look at this. And I'll show you how I prune that. I'd like this to, to get nice and bushy for us over the season. And looks like we've already got a pretty good start on that. But uh, I'm going to grab a few cups of that anyway today because I'd like to make a pesto. And I'll show you how I do it. Come on over. Okay, so you can see in this plant where that this is the the lead grower here, the stem. I'm gonna go down a little bit. I'd like it to bush out rather than get taller. So I'm gonna go down a little bit. And you see where you've got these two sets of leaves here? Down here is where you're gonna clip. Just like that. These two should go on and produce new growth out of them. And you can even see we've got little, little nubblies there. So I'm gonna go ahead and prune up this basil. I need two cups for the pesto recipe that I'm putting together. My pesto recipe calls for two cups of this. I think I've got a little more than that. Um, so I'm gonna mix up some pesto and get that frozen so we can use it whenever we want for like a quick meal or just got home, everything's hectic, but we have pasta, that kind of a meal. This smells wicked good. Ugh. I am so looking forward to pesto. It's been a while since I've had it and what a nice treat to be able to get it right out of the garden. Okay, so here we have our marvelous dill flower. It came in from the garden a little wilty. We were out there a long time. So I popped this dill into a cup of water and let it rehydrate and plump up a little bit. So all I'm doing here in preparation for popping it in the freezer is laying it out um, with as much space, I'm laying them out with as much space as I can in between them. We want them to freeze in this position so that they don't all just freeze together. So this, this is a first for me. I have never tried this before. I have been assured by a number of people that these dill heads will be well preserved in a good shape so they'll be ready for pickling. Um, Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. I've also heard you can preserve these in just straight vinegar. So I might try that over the season as well. That said, I've got much more dill that I'm gonna put into dirt today. And uh, so if this doesn't work out, we don't have to go to the grocery store and freak out trying to find a bunch of dill heads in the produce section. We are in. I will check back on that in a few hours and hopefully they'll be ready to get into the big bag and go down to the freezer downstairs. So I've got all our ingredients for our pesto together. Come see what's going on here. All right, so we're gonna use a decent olive oil. We're gonna use our two cups of basil. I've got a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano, salt and pepper, of course three nice big cloves of garlic, got a half a cup of walnuts. We're gonna toast them um, just in a dry pan for a few moments on top of the stove. Get a little color into them. Don't walk away from this. You don't wanna walk away from it. It burns very, very quickly.
We'll start with our walnuts that we toasted earlier and our garlic. Honestly, I didn't chop too hard. It's going in the food processor, so why spend the extra effort? I'm just gonna pulse this a little bit until it gets a little more broken down. So it looks like this. Now we're gonna add our basil leaves and some salt and pepper. We're gonna leave the parm until the very end on this. So there are our basil leaves. Now we're gonna also add a half teaspoon of salt. We're gonna start the food processor running and then once we've got it up to speed and stuff looks like it's starting to get a little blendy, we're gonna pop the top on this and drizzle in our olive oil. I'm gonna add our Parmesan cheese. So let's check out our pesto. Okay, so let's see how this came out. I think it's gonna need just a little bit of lemon juice. Yeah, that is, it's pretty good. I'm gonna add just a touch of lemon juice to it, about a tablespoon, a, a good healthy squeeze. That's perfect, it's just the way we like it. So here's our pesto. Um, I highly encourage you to give it a good stir down after it comes out of the food processor because sometimes you'll find like the nuts have collected in the crevices. All that's left now is to just pop it into some containers and get it in the freezer. And then anytime we need a quick meal, we just defrost that in the microwave, make some pasta and boom, it's dinner time. So our pesto gave us two nice little half cup measure containers full. I'm going to pop these in the freezer and then we can have them pretty much anytime we want. Here's our dill right out of the freezer. Everything looks super intact, super frozen. I'm going to get these into a Ziploc bag, pop them in the chest freezer in the basement and 
think good thoughts. I would love to be able to use these when we're getting ready to do our pickling in a few weeks. So I'm gonna get this all set up and popped in the freezer and head back out to the garden and see what's going on with the raspberry patch. So Bill got into this patch today and he weeded the stuffing out of it. Come look at what's going on here. He got out all the stuff that was choking this berry mound. You can see it's got fruit all over the place, all over the place. Just look at all this beautiful fruit coming in. The guys are home with cattle panels. Um, I'm so excited about this project. When we first moved here, the berry mound was, it was underneath like tarps and grown in nonsense and berries had grown up through the plastic tarps. So we spent a good couple of days just pulling out that plastic and trying to get all the weeds out. And so this has been an ongoing project since last year. I'm gonna be thrilled when we've got trellises up in there that these canes can climb all over. And uh, I'm gonna put up some bird netting this year. So hopefully we'll get to actually taste the fruit. I was totally bummed. I went out last year to go harvest some berries and I was like, rats, there's no jam for us this year. <laughs> Um, but this season I intend to do it differently. I've got some bird netting in the shed. We're gonna put the trellises up and then we'll drape the bird netting over that. And hopefully, hopefully there will be a couple of pots of jam at the end of that rainbow. I am so hoping for it this year. So come root with me. So we are trellised up and we are both running out of gas. <laughs> uh, but the trellis is up with the raspberry bushes. I kind of wove the branches in and out for the time being. What I would really love to learn this autumn is how to, you know, maintain and, and prune berry canes. So I am probably gonna take a deep dive down somebody's YouTube channel and go research that nonsense. Um, but for the time being, I wove together some branches in the middle so stuff would just sort of stay contained. Um, and tomorrow we bird net. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a video all of its own. Bill and I are already in discussions about what said bird netting is going to look like. And I think we have two different ideas. So there's gonna be some negotiating and whatnots. Um, so that's going to be a whole video all by itself. I'm hundred percent certain. So anyway, thank you for coming along with me and hanging out with us while we got this trellising up. I will catch you up soon. Take care.